And so the primary function here is emphasis on God's essential holiness. And it's, they're, they're speaking one to another, right? They're crying one to another. We're not told how many. So it's not as if there's just two or three that are there. Could be, could be three million. I mean, who knows? Right? We're, not, we're not told, but they're crying one to another, almost antiphonal-like. And saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord, the Lord of hosts, Jehovah of hosts, the whole earth is, is full of, of his glory. And so it's holiness, holiness, to know the Lord, to see the Lord, to have the revelation of the Lord's glory is to convey to us holiness. This is one of the chief things, right? We, we, we sing about it as we will later, worshiping the Lord in the beauty of his holiness for the believer. Holiness is beauty, and beauty is holiness. You, you can't take your cue from the world, which depicts this or that thing is beautiful, which are in themselves unholy. It's not true. That's a contradiction of terms. You're, you're speaking gibberish at that point. Holiness is beauty. And this is what the Lord says. This is why when he says, be holy as I am holy. Stop and think about it. He's calling his people to beauty. He's saying, I have redeemed you. I am recreating you. I will eventually glorify you. But I am at, the, I'm at work right now in making you holy, which is at the same time making you beautiful. In God's eyes, being made truly beautiful. This, this dominates Isaiah for the rest of his ministry. 26 times in the prophecy of Isaiah, he refers to the Lord as the Holy One of Israel. This is distinctively Isaiah, the language of Isaiah, to speak of him especially as the Holy One of Israel. We're told that his whole earth, that the whole earth is filled with his glory. And again, we must be brief here, but the idea is that this glory can't be contained. It's not limited, as it were, to the throne room of heaven, nor can be. It can't even be contained within the created universe. God is infinite in his being and eternal and so on. And so the earth is filled with his glory. And so God is not just depicted as one who is transcendent. He is depicted that way. High and lifted up. He is transcendent. But not only. He's also imminent. He's also near. His glory is filling the earth. And so the created universe, as Calvin says, is the theater of his glory. In which his glory is depicted to the sons of men and so on. It's filling the whole. It's the air. It's in the air that we breathe and so on. But God is near in all of these things. 